Hello grade 12s, it is a pleasure to have you with us again for another lesson in the differential calculus series. In our last lesson, we established that differential calculus was invented by mathematicians for specific reasons. Today we'll again join Donovan and MacGyver as they explore this a bit more and discuss why we need calculus. They start with a discussion about the task they did in the last lesson. MacGyver had to make a series of boxes out of a 20 by 20 centimeter piece of paper and plot their volumes on a Cartesian plane. Let's join them now and see what they found. Now, MacGyver, can you quickly remind us of the problem we are busy working on and the surprise that we got at the end of the lesson? Sure. To start off, we were given the problem of making a box from a 20 centimeter by 20 centimeter square piece of cardboard. And the question of what size to cut the squares out from each corner of the cardboard so that we would get a box with the largest possible volume. We made a number of boxes and worked out their volume and found that when we cut out a corner with a side of three centimeter, we got a box with a volume of 588 centimeters cubed. But we had no way of knowing that this box was the one that had the greatest possible volume, even though we hadn't made a box with a bigger volume. That's right. Keep going. What did we do next? Well, I didn't really want to make more boxes because it would take forever to make every possible box. So we came up with a solution that was smarter to work it out. We came up with the idea of trying to draw a graph of the situation to see if that could give us some more clues of how to determine the size of the corner square that will lead to the box with the largest volume. We did that by drawing two axes, a horizontal one to represent the length of the square cut out from the corner of the cardboard, a vertical axis to correspond to the volume of the box. Then we plotted two very obvious points, this one here which was the answer we got when you cut out no square so we couldn't make a box, which gave us a volume of zero. And this one? Which corresponds to cutting off a square so big that there is no cardboard left with which to make a box. And again, the volume was zero. Then we pointed out that in most of our work with graphs in school so far, we had always worked with graphs that are symmetrical between these points. And so, we plotted a rough sketch of how we thought the volume would behave for a value between two extremes. And that is where I made my mistake. I just assumed that the curve would look like that. If it did, then the maximum volume would correspond to a square cut out of the corner of the cardboard with a side of five centimeters. But we know from the boxes we built that there are boxes with greater volumes, which would correspond to these values over here on the graph. This is where I got stuck. If you remember, for your task, I asked you to plot the values that we found when we constructed all those boxes. Let's have a look at your answer now and see if that will help us. OK. So this is the volume for the box we get when you cut out the side of five centimeters. For each of these values here, where we cut out a side of four centimeters, where we had a side of three centimeters, and where we had a side of two centimeters. The volume is greater than what we expected when you drew the graph. The only problem is that this graph doesn't tell me for what size cutout I will get the greatest possible volume. I'm just not sure what to do. And I'm not going to try and guess the shape of the graph like I did last time. I was completely off. I suppose I could start by cutting more boxes of different side lengths. For example, I haven't tried out uh, cutting a size of three and a half and three and three quarters. But if I did, I would be here forever. There's just too many options. Well, you're in luck. I have something here that can help us do that. 
It is this smart little graphing program that will draw a graph for us as long as we can give it an equation. An equation? That's right. If you remember, an equation is like a formula for all the possible values on a graph. Yeah, that's right. I never thought of that. And if you can give the computer an equation for the volume in terms of the amount we cut off, it will draw the graph. So instead of trying to work out each possible volume, our new challenge is to see if we can develop an equation for the volume of the box in terms of the size of the square that we cut off. Can I give it a try? Sure. All right. What if I make the dimensions of the square that we cut out x centimeter by x centimeter? We know that the side of the cardboard sheet is 20 centimeter. So it follows that this length here will be 20 centimeter minus 2 times x centimeter. If I now transfer these dimensions to this sketch, then we can see that the base of the box will be 20 minus 2x multiplied by 20 minus 2x, and that the height will be x. It follows that the volume will be given by 20 minus 2x times 20 minus 2x times x. Excellent. Now, if I enter that into the computer, I get this graph. Wow, that is pretty cool. And it really does look similar in shape too. What we might have gotten by joining the dots when we plotted those values earlier. But there's something strange about the graph the computer drew. What's so strange about it? Well, the graph carries on beyond 10 centimeter and even has a volume for negative values of x. That doesn't make sense. I mean, we know that. If you cut off corners 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter, there'll be no cardboard left with which to make the box. So how can we get the volume of values greater than 10? A very good observation, MacIver. Do you remember the word domain from your work on functions and other lessons? If I remember correctly, the domain was all the possible x values for the graph. That's right. To put that more mathematically, we would say that the domain is all the values of x for which the function is defined. Now, in our case, the values of x from 0 to 10 centimeters are the domain for the box. But the domain for the equation is the whole set of real numbers. Put differently, the part of the graph between 0 and 10 makes sense for the box. The equation itself has values for all values of x. OK, so are you saying that we can ignore the part of the graph which has values outside the part that interests us? Yes, we're only going to focus on those values of interest to us. But you'll see later that it's not a bad idea to know what the whole graph looks like anyway. Now that we've drawn the graph, let's see if it can help us solve our problem. If you remember, we drew this graph to try and help us find the value of x that will ensure the greatest volume. Can you read off the graph for which side length, in other words, for which x value we will get the greatest volume for the box? It seems as if the greatest volume occurs for a value of x greater than 3, but less than 4. But I can't see the exact point which gives us the greatest volume. I wish we could see it more clearly. We can. We can zoom into that part of the graph like this. That helps. It seems as if the greatest volume occurs for a value of x greater than 3, but less than 3,5. Can we zoom in again, please? I still can't see the exact point yet. Sure. Here we go. That is so cool, and it really helps. It seems as if the greatest volume occurs 
for a value of x greater than 3,25 but less than 3,5. But we still don't know the exact answer. It's true. Do you see that by just zooming in, we aren't necessarily getting any closer to knowing the exact answer? Yes. Even though it seems like we are getting closer to an accurate answer, it also seems by going another level, we are increasing the number of possible answers. OK, so rather than zooming in more, I want us to see if we can develop a more precise method of finding the value of x that will give us the greatest volume. Ah, I think I get where you're going with this. Isn't this the same problem that mathematicians couldn't solve and they invented calculus? Close, very close. But the mathematician's problem is a little more general. For now, I'd like to see if we can state our problem clearly and then see if we can find a way of solving it. Do you think that you could do that for us, MacGyver? I think so. I think our problem is that we want to find the value of x, which will give us the greatest volume. The point at which the graph has a turning point. I guess we could say that we want to find the coordinates of the turning point of this graph. You're almost there. We need to be careful here. Do you notice that the graph also has a turning point here? And at this point, we would have a minimum volume. So we don't want just any turning point. We want a particular turning point. We want this point over here where we have a local maximum. Do you have any suggestions for how we could go about trying to find this point? I'm not really sure. I mean, we could test all the values of x between 3,25 and 3,5. In other words, we could calculate the volume for each of the x values and then see for which value the volume was the greatest. What do you mean by each of the x values. Do you mean that you would list all of the x values between 3,25 and 3,5 and then work out the volume for each of them? Do you think that is possible to do? I suppose not. Well, we could. But I guess I'd be here till I was as old as you. Yes, you would. Or even older. The reason for that is that between any two x values that we choose, there is always another one which is a property of the real numbers. So we'd need to keep testing forever to test all of them. But if you tested quite a few, we'd get pretty close, wouldn't we? For the problem of the box, we'd probably get close enough. But as a mathematical problem, we want to be sure that we have found the absolute maximum possible value. I suppose so. I have another idea. Let me show you. Here's the graph. What if I went about this another way? What if I drew a horizontal line, say here, then the intersections of the graph and the line would correspond to where the volume equals 300. As we can see, there would be three intersections, two that make sense for our box, and an extra one. Okay, and then? Two solutions in the part of the graph that makes sense for my box, and the third for an x value that is larger than 10 centimeters means that I can move the horizontal line up to, say, 450, like this. I think I'm with you so far. If I carry on moving it up, let's say 600. But now, I would only get one solution, and it's not in the region, so I would know that I'd gone too far. I can carry on in this way until I find the volume for which I would get one root in the region of interest and one extra one. Then I would know that I'd have the value of x for which the volume is greatest. Oh, I get it. So then all we'd have to do is keep on taking guesses for the volume and then solving the equation 20 minus 2x times 20 minus 2x times x equals the volume that we have guessed until we get to a volume that gives us an equation with only one root in the region of interest. Yes, there's still just one little problem, but we can talk about that next time. Okay, I can wait. One last thing before I leave it for today. What would you call this line here? The one that gives two equal roots when we solve the equation. We called it a tangent, did we? 
except that this one does cut the graph in another place. And we said that tangents only touch the graph once. Great. In fairness, in the past we have only dealt with graphs. The tangent only touched the graph in one place, like in quadratics. What we are discovering here is that a tangent to a graph in one place can cut the graph again somewhere else. The important thing is that it is tangent at this point. What that means for us is, if we can determine that horizontal line is a tangent, we would also know the x value for which the volume is a maximum, and we would also know the maximum volume. But that isn't as easy as it seems. In fact, it is very difficult, and it is for this reason that differential calculus was invented. This box problem has showed us how we can use calculus to solve everyday problems. This tool will help us in more mathematical modeling problems. Thank you for joining us, Grade 12s. Remember to try the task video at the end of this section and to look at our website for more resources. Goodbye.